Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Kevin from the Feeler Group at eXp, and we're here to shoot our weekly video where we talk about all things real estate related. Any questions that you guys have about the market, about investing, about life as a real estate agent, please put it in the comments below. I'll know what to make a video about in the future. And if you haven't yet, please hit subscribe. Make sure you get notified of all our videos in the future. And if you like that content, please give us a like. I really appreciate that. So this week's video, we're gonna talk about short-term rentals like Airbnb, versus long-term rentals like your traditional year lease. And I know some of you are thinking, well, Airbnb in Ottawa, we actually can't do that. We have to live in the property. And that's true, but this is for the broader perspective of the investment strategies overall, and keeping in mind that laws and bylaws always change, and I definitely see potential for Airbnb being a viable option in the future. So first, let's talk about the pros of each. In long-term rentals, you're gonna not have to worry about furnishing in it. You're gonna have a lot less work in management, and three, you're gonna have a predictable income. Assuming you get the right tenant who pays on time every month, you're gonna be able to have a predictable income that you can budget for. Now with short-term rentals, whether you're using Airbnb, VRBO, or HomeAway, you're gonna have a higher income, you're gonna have the ability to use the place if you like, and you're gonna have a diversified risk. Firstly, when we're talking about higher income, we can see the difference between maybe $2,000 a month on a long-term rental and $5,000 a month for Airbnb. But you gotta remember that this isn't all profit. Airbnb is gonna come with higher fees, like cleaning fee, management fee, um, fees to Airbnb, and taxes depending on the city that you live in. Another big advantage to Airbnb is being actually able to use the property. So say the property is on the water or near a desired location you'd like to visit, you always have the opportunity to book it yourself when it isn't booked. If you have a long-term rental, the tenant's gonna be there, you aren't able to just kick them out and say that you wanna use it for the week. So the last major advantage is gonna be diversified risks. Just like in the last scenario, if you get a good tenant, you can count on that money coming in every month. But what happens if they lose their job or if you have problems with them and need to get them out? The eviction process can take a very long time. It can be very costly. With Airbnb, you have different tenants booking all the time. You're never gonna have to worry about getting them evicted uh, or them not being able to pay. You have more ones coming in. Now, on to the cons. For long-term rentals being that you aren't able to use it, uh, any eviction process can be very difficult, and it's gonna be less revenue. So we know less revenue is gonna bring a little bit less work as well, but the major con being the eviction process in Ontario having to deal with the Labor Tenant Board, uh, I know from experience this can get a very costly and drawn out process. Now for the cons of Airbnb, it's gonna be a lot more work, you're gonna to have to fully furnish the place, and you're gonna to have to deal with the different cities, laws and regulations. Of course, being in Ottawa, we'll talk about how a lot of the stuff doesn't apply because in Ottawa right now, uh, the city says that you actually have to live in your unit as your primary residence to be able to Airbnb it. More management is pretty self-explanatory. You're gonna to need to find a cleaner, you're gonna to need to find someone to manage the property, uh, and of course, deal with any Airbnb issues. And finally, furnishing it. This can not only be costly, but quite a bit of work. Uh, I personally hate moving around furniture. I'm joking, but not really. So finally, when deciding whether you want to Airbnb your property or have it as a long-term rental, there's a few things that you wanna consider. The first one's being the laws and regulations. Like I said, in Ottawa right now, you have to legally be living in the unit, um, but a lot of cities we see an extra tax for Airbnb, and I could also see that's where Ottawa's going in the future. The second one is gonna be your ROI, or your return on investment. Now we took a look and we saw that, okay, Airbnb, you might be able to get 5,000 versus 2,000 for long-term rental, but you also have to account in all the extra costs and all the extra work. I think in this scenario, it would make sense to Airbnb the property, but if the difference was only 3,000 to 2,000, I would take the long-term rental every time. So a third factor would be, do you want to use this property yourself? Now, if you're buying properties in the city you live in, the answer is probably no, but if you're buying properties outside of the city or in different cities, you might wanna look at Airbnb so that you can also use the property as well. The fourth biggest one is gonna be knowing your market. Is this market prime for Airbnb or is it prime for long-term rental? What's gonna make the most sense depending where the property is? All right, so that pretty much sums up our video today on Airbnb versus long-term rental. But like always guys, if you have questions, please put it in the comments below. I'll make sure I make a video about it in the future. And thanks for watching, I'll see you next week.